Happy Hey guys, Sean here from the Message Trust and I'm so happy to be sharing with you this morning. Uh, you would agree with me that so much has changed in these times, you know. We've seen a change in the economic status of our country, a change in our shopping experiences, you know, going out to the mall, seeing everybody in masks. It seems a bit daunting, doesn't it? We saw a change in our social activities, a change in our exercise routines. But more importantly, we saw a change in the way we do church or the way we do ministry. And yet the message, we are heavily reliant on face-to-face -face contact, you know. And a lot of what we have done was forced into change. You know, be it through our higher tours, our work in schools, our works in churches and our works in prisons, even our works in communities. We were so focused on, you know, face-to-face -face contact that we now needed to find new creative ways to be served out our mandate that God has given us as a ministry in the city. Amidst all the change, God's Word teaches us two fundamental truths of our Lord and Savior. That He never changes and His love never fails. This encouraged us as a ministry to continue to live out God's purpose and communicate these truths through works of service. So to my first point, I would love to share with you this morning that God is immutable. You know, Hebrews 13, 8, it teaches us that He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And by this portion of scripture alone, we can draw the conclusion that God is immutable. And what a great privilege that we have to put our trust in Him, the unchanging God. You know, from the Old Testament through to the New Testament, we see one constant. And that constant is our God, that is our Savior. The benefit of placing our trust in Him the Bible says that He gives us peace, perfect peace. I'm sure that you can agree that amidst these trying times, peace is something that we could all do with. I got this message from Tim once, and uh, the scripture that he wrote in that message was Isaiah 26, verse 3. It says that you will keep in perfect peace all those who trust in you, and all whose thoughts are fixed on you. Now furthermore, Paul writes to the church in Philippians, in Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7, he actually says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. And you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. This peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ. Now, these scriptures were written centuries apart, but it proves one thing. That God truly never changes. The prophecy and the scripture Isaiah wrote speaks of a God that promotes peace and provides peace. When Paul writes to the Philippian church, he affirms that by saying that God will give us a peace that transcends all understanding. That when we direct our trust toward Him, He sustains us through perfect peace. I want to urge you to continue to doing so if you have. Fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith. And if you have not done so yet, I want to urge you, I want to invite you to do so. The Bible says that in Him there is fullness of joy. And I'm sure that that portion of peace that He provides, you know, it really echoes that through trying times we can lean on His joy. Secondly, I want to speak about His love that never fails. Psalm 130 verse 7 says this, O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is unfailing love, and His redemption overflows. What a great promise that is. The psalm was written, you know, this is a psalm that uh, the guys used to sing when they were on pilgrimage. But it speaks about the love of the Lord that is unfailing, and it speaks of His redemption that overflows. Other translations say His redemption is certain. So David calls for Israel to hope in the Lord. You know, my, my daughter Bailey, when making a mistake, she always looks at either me or her mom, and she would ask this question, do you still love me? Now, this happened about a week ago. Uh, so, so we have been potty training our daughter, and every time she wants to make it to the toilet, she's just a bit too late, and she misses the pot and messes on the floor. And she would look up at us with, so, with, with a face that is distraught, you know, and she asks that question. Mommy and Daddy, do you still love me? Now, the Daddy in me immediately kicks in. And I'm a like, baby, it was only a mistake, man. Don't worry about it. But my wife's response to her, in that response, I really heard the Lord speaking. My wife said to her, Baby, no matter what you do, we'll never stop loving you. And man, what assurance 
in that statement, no matter what you do, we'll never stop loving you. It removes the fear element out of our relationship. You know, my daughter now no longer fears to make mistakes because she knows that no matter what she does, no matter how bad it is, her mommy and daddy will never stop loving her. You see, that's God's love toward us. The scripture says that His love is unfailing. God's love toward me is a definite, even when I fall short. You know what scripture comes to mind when I think of the story of my daughter, when I think of my life and I'm constantly asking God, you know, do you love me? Why do you choose me with so much mistakes that I made? You know, the Bible says this, there is no fear in love. That's in 1 John 4 verse 18. The perfect love drives out all fear, dispels all fear. Because fear has to do with punishment. And the one who fears is not made perfect in love. A love that fear has to do with punishment. And I'm sure that when my daughter made a mistake previously, and I may not have reacted in a gracious way, it sparked something within her that brought with it fear. But when my wife said, baby, no matter what you do, we'll never stop loving you. It changed my approach to order my heart toward my daughter so that when she makes a mistake now she doesn't fear punishment she is not made perfect in all that she can be through fear but through perfect love you know life is so different now we can we can easily fall into the trap of fearing that we're doing too little or fearing that i'm spending too little time with god i, I can guarantee you guys through this lockdown that was my mind I was thinking I need to do more. I've got a group of friends that we meet every Thursday night and I, and I kind of share some spiritual guidance uh, in this um, life coaching group. And part of what I was telling them is like, I feel that because I'm not in my own home, that I'm doing too little. You know, it's always great to want to do more and want to spend more time with God, but we cannot earn His love through that. You know, in the book of Romans, it actually says that nothing can separate us from God's love. The truth is that He loves us no matter what. Fear shouldn't be the driving force towards spending time with Him or wanting to do something for Him. He calls us to rest in His love. Our daughter is not driven toward us by fear. She's drawn through our unending love and assurance toward her. You know, doesn't the Bible also say that it's the kindness of God that leads us to repentance? I believe that so much now. It's really resting in Him. You know, 1 John 3 verse 1 says this, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. I love that, that statement where John writes. It actually says that, that is what we are. It owns the identity that we are the children of God. And He has poured out His love on us. You know, John 3 16 says that He loved the world that He sent His Son. That all who believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. That's a love lavished over us, so that we can be restored to our true identity. And that is being children of God. We are not fighting for identity, we are fighting from it. And that's the best thing about this. Once we've received Christ as our Lord and Savior, we no longer fight to be a child of God. We fight for Him. And so that His truth can be known throughout the earth. The reason the world does not know us, or not know us, is that he did not know him. You know, the Bible teaches us in John 17 that it's in our unity, you know, that the world will know that he was sent. You know, Jesus says, how will they know that you are my disciples? It's your love for one another. You know, love is the core element in our relationship to each other, but also our relationship toward the Father. And I guess my cry is this, that we will be empowered by these truths of God even more. Knowing that he's a God that never changes, though the seasons change, he remains. You know, though the seasons change and circumstances change, his love remains, his love is steadfast. To truly love out of this identity, we need to accept his love. Let us drive us toward displaying his love to those who are in need. To introduce them to a God that never changes. I want to urge you to do that. You know, Hebrews 10, 23, it says, This letter is hold unswervingly to the hope that we profess, for he who promised is faithful. You know, the word faithful, that speaks of something that brings into eternity. He remains faithful. So we can hold on to this hope unswervingly. 
but we can also profess this hope. You know, throughout the world now, we're hearing of revival sparking out in this pandemic. I was sitting in on one of the Alpha training sessions not too long ago, and they actually communicated, you know, that through uh, videos going out and YouTube videos going out of preaching, they've seen more people reached during this pandemic than ever before. This one pastor shared about one week he had 500 views, the next week he had over 3,500 views. And that speaks about a people that are dying to hear the truth that God loves them, the truth that God never changes. And I guess I'll cry to you this morning is that, that you would, in your own capacity, share of this God, share of this love that He has entrusted you with, so that those who come into contact with you will experience Him in His fullness, His love in its fullness, and it will drive them toward repentance. Let's be empowered to share about this unchanging God that displays an unending love toward us. Would you mind if I pray for us? Father, thank you so much for all that you are. Thank you, Lord, that you are God that never changes. Thank you, Lord, that your love towards us is unending. And Father, that we can put our hope in that. Your word declares that you will, take, will give us perfect peace when we put our trust in you, when our minds are fixed on you. Lord, your word declares that we do not need to worry about anything, but with prayer and petitioning, we can make our requests known before you. And you will give us a peace that surpasses all understanding, a peace that guards our hearts and guards our minds. And Father, also I pray that your love and your faithfulness will empower us to do more, to profess the goodness of our Father. I pray that we will display a kindness that will cause lives to transform from the old into the new as they put their hope in trust in you, God, as our Savior. We pray this, Lord, not because we deserve it, but because we know you love us and you love giving the gifts to your children. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much for allowing us the honor to be a part of your Sunday service. If you're out and about, don't forget our Gangstar Cafes in Mowbray and Durbanville are still open, selling amazing coffee, toasties, and even if you want to take that coffee home for your special families, buy a bag and help support someone in one of our Gangstar Cafes. We would love to end up with a new lyric video from our very own Chrissy T. Stay safe, see you soon! Oh, you started already? Okay. Walking down the corridors of sorrow Trying to find a simple place to unload Crazy messy thoughts trying to overtake Where's the hope? Painfully one by one I put each time But two by two I seem to pick it up again Oh, we
And the joy that makes my 